Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Neutral Zone Rewind. Uh, this time around, we have the Akron Pink Out, their eighth annual uh, Pink Out event. Uh, and there is a lot to go over. Uh, we had a ton of games uh, over the weekend. I think we had like 10 teams and a women's league match uh, or a women's league uh, events take place. So a lot of dodgeball to talk about for one tournament. Uh, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll start off with the scores. Mitch, what do we got for this? So as you said, it was a busy weekend in Akron, Ohio this weekend. And it started off with probably the best game of the entire tournament. Ohio and Penn State went together, played in a shootout that finished in overtime 5-4. to four. We have a little bit to talk about that later. Uh, the Maryland uh, Terrapins played the Kent State Golden Flashes, and it was a close affair, closer than what the scoreline shows, but uh, Maryland got the victory in the end 5-2 to two after rattling off at least three straight successive points against the Kent team that Seemed a little out of their depth, but we'll talk about that later. CSU got their first win of the season over Akron B, 5 to nothing. Miami then followed up with a 7 nothing win over Akron B. And then back to Ohio and uh, their game. They played UC Cincinnati in their next game and lost 4-3 in a very thrilling shootout, similar to their Penn State game. Akron... Uh, would then play Maryland in an overtime game. It seemed like almost every game that was super close would end up going to overtime. And this was up there with uh, the OU game as well. A 3-2 victory for the Zips in overtime. Akron would then play Saginaw 4-3, a win for the Zips. My uh, Maryland, sorry, not Miami. Maryland would beat Akron B uh, 7-0 as well. Cincinnati would then go on to beat Penn State uh, 4-2. to Penn State dropping out of the conversation for one of those teams that can take it to the next level, but maybe it was just a bad tournament for them. We have a talking point that Ryland wants to talk about later about them. Kent then got their lone win on the day against Saginaw 5-1. to uh, Bowling Green, the Falcons beat the Vikings of CSU 4-1. to The Red Hawks keeping their red-hot day a flame against the Bowling Green Falcons, four to two. Miami would then finish off their day with a six nothing thumping of Penn State, a game that could have gone either way. And I guess Miami really wanted it to go their favor with a huge win on their season. Ohio would then play uh, Saginaw, six to two, a victory for the Bobcats, who seemed to get back into their normal stride. A good showing for them following uh, the Buckeye opener. Then Kent and Akron would play in a wagon wheel rivalry game, and Akron would get the best of the Flashes 5-1. to one. Uh, Cincinnati would then play Bowling Green in a 3-2 overtime victory, the third and final game that went to overtime uh, at this tournament. And once again, I don't really know how you can pick uh, which overtime game was the best because they were insanely good, all three of them. And to round out the day, the host Akron would go 3-0 and on their day. I mean, 4-0, sorry with a 3 nothing victory over Cleveland State University. Yeah, um, a lot of really good matches um, <clears throat> and a lot of really interesting results. Um, starting off, uh, one of the biggest surprises of the day was uh, Miami uh, looked really, really good. Um, blew out Penn State, uh, had a very good win against BG, and um, had a dominant win over Akron B. Um, the Ohio region in general just looks incredibly deep this year. Um, you know, even even the low end teams are still a lot stronger than we've seen uh, in the past from the Ohio region. It really looks like, um, you know, even though it's OSU's uh, division to lose and um, UC is right behind them, uh, there is a lot of talent creeping up on that door. Uh, Akron also replicated their consistent success at home. They went four and zero. They tend to always perform best at home. They have some of their best performances ever. Um, come at their own home, home tournaments, and this one was no exception. Um, Penn State, yeah, had a very rough day. Um, about as rough as you could have uh, for a tournament like this. Um, they started their day out uh, with a... They were up 3-0 on OU, uh, and OU ended up bringing that back uh, and bringing it into overtime at the end of the day. Um, yeah, just tough day for them. Uh, they All the hey. talent is there, but I am... You know, they're going to need to focus a little bit more if they want to really be the contenders that we thought that they could be at the beginning of the season. Um, 
Ohio looks back to normal as well. Uh, the you know Terrence Checkett, that's an MVP candidate uh, potential coming back to their team. Uh, definitely made all the difference for them. They this tournament was definitely a get right tournament for them. They you know had a fantastic comeback win against Penn State. Uh, brought Cincy all the way down to the wire and then won comfortably against Saginaw. Uh, very very good for them. It definitely looks like they're going to get their season back on track, and I, I expect this type of performance to definitely be the norm for them. Uh, CSU got their first win. Congratulations to them. Uh, you know, they're a very young rebuilding team uh, and they have a lot of talent there. Uh, and then, yeah, the last last little bit, too, is uh, BGSU taking UC to overtime. Uh, BGSU is a scrappy group. Uh, we've seen them now take two of the, you know, top teams in the league to overtime. They haven't quite been able to get over that hump, uh, but, you know, clearly they can take top end talent down to the wire. Uh, so that was very interesting to see. And then we've got a few uh, players to uh, shout out as well before we get down to the women's league scores. Um, Jeremy Faircloth from Akron uh, was an absolute monster in every game that he played, just destroying people in transition, catching everything in sight. He was unbelievable. Uh, Jordan Jones for CSU also um, suffered an injury last year, so didn't get to play much the back half of the year, but definitely looks back to form as he's starting to get a lot of catches um, and, you know, return to the player that he was for them. That's going to be really important as CSU keeps developing. And uh, Caleb Dixon from UMD uh, supposedly secured his 100th career catch. So congratulations to him. He's always a monster catcher for UMD. Uh, yeah, he's a great, he's fantastic for them. And then, uh, yeah, we also had a women's league uh, event. So there's a couple bunch of scores to talk about from that as well. And uh, yeah, go go ahead. What do we got for that? So the women's league tournament uh, was one that was watched very intently as this was really the first main one of the year after much, you know, talk about this league getting underway. And it got off to a bang, to say the least. The very first game that we saw at this tournament was an overtime thriller between the host Akron and Michigan State. Akron would end up getting the better of Michigan State in overtime, but that game was five to four. And I think, honestly, that game might take the cake as probably the best game all tournament, in my personal opinion, even better than any of the games that we saw on Saturday. Uh, heading into the women's league, so uh, we have a mixed team. Um, I'm not 100% sure what those teams were. Ryland, uh, what teams made up the mixed team? Yeah, so a mixed team, it was a combination of girls from uh, BGSU, Miami, Kent State, uh, and Grand Valley, I believe. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's that's everyone from those, yeah, those four teams uh, combined to basically make up a mixed team. And there were some very good players on that squad as well. And we will talk about them in a little bit. But as we go through the results, the mixed team got a 10 nothing victory over Akron's B team. They then followed that up with another thrashing. Uh, but uh, to Michigan State's B team, 5-1 victory for the mixed team. Then CSU women would get their first victory. 7-3 uh, game in uh, the second highest scoring game of the whole day. 7-3 victory over Akron B. Then Michigan State would get one back. Uh, they'd get their win over Cleveland <laughs> State in a 5-2 to to affair. Akron would continue their day just steamrolling uh, teams up to this point six to two a victory over msu's uh, b team and then the a team from msu returned the favor to akron b team and won 10 to one in a game that you know i say that a lot of games were a lot closer on paper and i but this one i think that speaks to a lot of it this game was very close but the scoreline definitely does not show it. and that's just the harsh reality sometimes the Akron uh, A team took down the mixed team six to two. The mixed team would then take MSU to overtime and win five to four. Two five to four overtime losses for MSU is a tough day for the Spartan women. CSU would get a four two victory over MSU B team, and to round off today, they would also get a five four victory over the host Akron. Yep, and uh, also the MSU B beat Akron B six to two. Um... And yeah, sorry, that was not that was not on my sheet. My bad. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, no, really good tournament. Um, three separate teams all went three and one on the day. Akron A, uh, the mixed team and CSU. Um, the women's talent in this league has never been deeper. Uh, it's really awesome to see this league start to take off. And uh, I really hope that we get some more schools that have, uh, you know, their own full women's squads as well. 
Uh, but for right now, it's all it's the Akron MSU and uh, CSU show. Uh, a couple key players. Uh, Ab- Abby Emery is probably the MVP of the tournament. She was unreal. Uh, I cannot stress how clutch she was, how insane her catching was. She had a point against MSU in, in crunch time where she caught four consecutive throws um, and basically just did that to everyone, everyone there, every team there. She was ridiculous. Uh, Allie Pohl also looks much improved from last year. She had an unbelievable throw. She was very scary to be on the opposing end of. She She's starting to throw very, very hard. Uh, Jasmine Hill for uh, GVSU is also developed quite nicely. She had a very, very good day. Uh, Rennie Kaiser as well for the mixed team, uh, just catching everything in sight. Uh, we'll shout out as well Kent State's own uh, Ellie Goblus- uh, Golubski. Um, her teammates loved her. This was her first ever uh, tournament, and she looked very, very good, getting constant kills, uh, making some very good catches. We're, we're impressed with her, and we're proud of her, and we're very excited to see if she develops. Uh, and CSU's uh, Sky Thornsberry and Catherine Mays, obviously, you know, household names in the women's league these days. Uh, looked every bit as good as they normally are. Um, and yeah, uh, the tournament was very, very good. Uh, you know, nobody went undefeated. Uh, there were plenty of thriller games and, you know, the teams almost seemed to cannibalize themselves with just how much they kept beating each other, how, how much parody there was um, in this women's league. And I'm, I'm very excited for the future of it. Uh, and yeah, with that, that is the uh, this episode of the Neutral Zone Rewind. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, uh, we should be having a couple more tournaments in the uh, next few weeks. Look out for uh, Miami and uh, Penn State in particular. Um, there might be a couple others that I'm forgetting about, but w- whenever they come up, I am sure we will talk plenty about them. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah, have a good day.